All right. Welcome to our bi-weekly SMI community meeting. Today is June 10th, 2020. And if you haven't so yet, please add yourself to the Google Docs that Herbert shared early on in the chat. All right, let's see where we are. Thanks for ascribing, Bridget. And I think the first action item or agenda item, let me say, is blog post suggestions. All right, so that's issue 36. Yeah, so we had, um, I added this one because we had talked a little while ago about getting community members to write blog posts. And I know the fine folks from Solo were interested in writing one about uh, Service Mesh Hub as an example of an implementation. And uh, I talked to Betty this morning. You did, I see, is on the call. I talked to Betty this morning and she was saying, yeah, they still are interested in writing that. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like a few people commented or gave ideas about what would be a reasonable um, community implementation of blog posts with, to wit if we had two people approve as per usual, but they were not from the same company as the blog post. Um, I just wanted to kind of circle back and see how everyone felt about that. Oh, any comments? Sounds good. Do we have anything actionable around that? Or uh, I think since it, it looks like we're getting kind of a lazy approve, people are either yes or eh. Um, I'll write up uh, guidelines in the blog or in the SMI spec.io repo um, and then uh, make it very easy and clear for you know, give people a template to submit an issue to put a blog, a blog post up. Um, does that meet with anyone's questions, approval? That sounds pretty good to me. What was the, so to recap, the only requirement is, well, you know, that, that the topic is relevant and that, uh, the, and that the blog is reviewed and approved by two independent parties. So to yep, I and I'll write a little bit more clearly, but I did write in the issue some proposed guidelines that people seem okay with, and basically that it can't be an ad for a commercial product. You can mention your product, but like it has to be interesting and actionable by people who are not buying something from you. Gotcha. Makes sense to me. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Let's see what's up next. Uh, looks like the top level spec update is pull request 169, right? And that's again you, Bridget. <laughs> oh, I added it, but I don't have a ton of more insight. It was actually uh, Stefan wanted to put this in. So maybe if you can clarify, Stefan. Can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. That was me. <laughs> um, we're talking about the spec pull request. Yeah, so we, we decided we want to do that, uh, normalize our custom resources so they are conformant with, uh, with the Kubernetes uh, object interface, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, we need uh, one more approval for that. Uh, and this pull request blocks the HTTP route one because I don't want to create a pull request to add spec to the HTTP route until we decide that, okay, everything should have a top level spec field. So we, if we could uh, get someone on board today to merge this one, then we can, uh, I can uh, move forward with the route. Um, we should also discuss if we have uh, time today, how, how are we going to deal with this kind of breaking change in the SDK? That sounds good. I approved it and I am definitely wanna discuss um, how to deal with that in the SDK. Cause it seems like uh, the versions are completely, like all the previous versions are gonna be completely incompatible and You'd have to delete all of your 
objects, because this isn't even something that the conversion webhook could really handle, right? Yeah, so, well, it's alpha. <laughs> yeah, my proposal is to just make a new release of the SDK, um, create a release node, a document on the release node, again, the change and link back to the spec, make yeah. people aware that we are doing this. Um, I'm, I'm in favor. I also don't see another path forward, but we probably want to just make sure uh, the Linkerd folks are okay with that and the console folks are okay with that since both of them have implemented um, traffic target and traffic spec. So uh, we can just ask in the channel. No, um, I don't think so. I mean, um... oh, Linkerd doesn't have traffic target and spec. Oh, my bad. Uh, but they do have specs, right? Because do they support, actually, uh, they don't support B1 alpha three of traffic split. So they, the spec doesn't matter. Console is the only uh, implementation. So we probably want to just run this past them and get an approval. Also the uh -huh. HTTP route change will break console as well. Um, which H HTTP route change? If we add the spec to it. Oh yeah, to the traffic specs, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, all right. Let's follow up in the channel and try to get it resolved today. I know it's late for the console folks. But anyway, I couldn't find any SMI implementation for console. So I'm not, I'm not sure console actually uses SMI or is just that project to, as a showcase that this is how SMI could work with console. Oh yeah. Did you see the adapter repo? Yeah. Okay. And it's like six months old. There is no mention of it on the console docs, nor in the console connect helm chart. So whoever is using it must be aware that this is purely experimental. That's fair, yeah. Do we have anyone here on the call who could comment on that? Who knows about the status there? I don't see anyone. No. Okay, so what do you suggest to do about it now? We need to follow up on the Slack channel. Okay. And most likely it'll just be fine. I don't think anybody's going to disagree. I just want to make sure everybody's aware. So Stefan, I can, I can ask Nick and take this up on the Slack channel. Cool. cool. Any other comments on that one, or can we move on to the next agenda item? Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, the next one is by Kalia. Conflicting HTTP headers from traffic split and traffic spec. Would you like to expand on that? Yes. So, hi, everyone. My name is Kalia. Um, I work with Michelle at Microsoft. And um, so we're, I was wondering about V1 alpha three for traffic split, because that allows you to specify HTTP headers for that. And, um, but so does traffic spec. So what do, what's the guidance for if the user configures a traffic split with headers that conflict with the ones in traffic spec? So traffic split does not support headers. It supports a reference to a spec where you specify headers. Okay. I think she meant, I could call you, you meant traffic target, right? Oh, traffic target, sure. So like if you have, <clears throat> uh, if your access control policy has one thing and then you create a traffic split, which references 
uh, a traffic spec, but that or that implementate like actually executing that traffic split is not possible because of the uh, policies you define or the specs you define and traffic target and reference and traffic target. How should we deal with how should an implementation deal with that? Is there any guidance around it? Have we ever talked about it? Um, I think that's a big question on our mind. Kali, you have anything else to expand on that? Yep. Okay, so the, the use case is you create two HTTP route groups with conflicting headers in them. Yeah. And you reference one in the traffic target and the other one in the traffic split, right? Yeah. Okay, so the, the traffic split will dictate how traffic flows and the target will block the traffic for that header. I, I don't see where the conflict is. I think um, one of the questions I personally had was, um, like, should uh, we mention in the spec anywhere uh, what happens when these when this conflict ar arises? Should we explicitly state that? Uh, in my opinion, it should be the implementation that handles it. And so, if there are errors that need to be bubbled up, or the user needs to understand that this split is not possible, or you know the errors that are coming because of this conflict between the split and the access policy, that, in my opinion, is is in is up to the mesh provider. Um, but it would be helpful if I think the spec uh, kind of talked about this type of behavior. I don't think that we explicitly state that these are independent functionality that don't necessarily, um, we, we don't handle them overlapping and they're overlapping or con conflicts between them overlapping is something that the provider has to deal with. Yeah, I think it goes back to the status discussion. Right. I think that's mm. right. So mm -hmm. let, let's imagine on the traffic target status sub resource, the impl implementation should report that um, this is blocked. Oh, no, on the traffic split, yeah. should report, okay, this is blocked by the traffic target. And this way, is not specific to the implementation. Anyone can look at the status and say and see that okay, this route is blocked by this other definition. Um, yeah, on create, that would be a good thing to um, to to make sure the implementation deals with. Um, and then I guess uh, when a policy is applied. Uh, does that mean that um, does that mean that the status of all relevant traffic splits get updated too? Because I think um, like on create it makes a lot of sense to like update the status, but if you want to deal with conflicts all the time, it just might be a heavy burden on the system. Maybe that's just what you need to do. I'm guessing on a change, how, how often will you change a HTTP route group definition? Let's say you could, it makes sense to change it every time your API, your app interface, interface changes. Maybe you, you add a new route or you add a new HTTP method to a certain route. That then is where a route group could change, right? Yeah. It's not, not and, every and, single deployment of an, of an app will reflect in an HTTP route group change. But yeah, I get your point, you can. Or even a traffic target change. Hmm. Yes. But if, if a traffic target blocks a split, then you'll get a non-authorized error, right? If the split yeah. points to a, let's say, 
unknown pod or a crashed application, then you'll get a 500 something. And it's from the HTTP response, it's clear that, okay, this is unauthorized and this is, I don't know, um, timeout or um, um, 503. I forgot his name. So I'm I'm guessing from a user perspective, it's clear that okay, you get an unauthorized error, and you can handle that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. GRPC also has a, a code for for unauthorized. TCP is hard in this case, but then you don't have headers for TCP. So yeah. it's not an issue, UDP neither. Yeah, I agree, we should, we should mention something in the, in the spec about this. Mm -hmm. So is there anything actionable around that? Can we create an issue or somehow someone taking up on that or? Kalia, do you, do you have an issue already open? No, I don't have an issue open. Do you have any thoughts around this? Yeah. Me? Just from the conversation. Yeah. Did you want to add anything? I just wanted yeah. to give you an opportunity. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm still just trying to follow along. So I think from this discussion, there's uh, at least between me and Stefan, <laughs> I haven't any, heard any objections. But I think we agree that we should mention um, uh, what the behavior uh, may look like when there is some conflicting uh, SMI policy, when there's a conflict between policy and traffic split. So there should be some message in the spec. I think we both agree on that. Uh, there's an open conversation around um, updating the status of the traffic split object to reflect that there might be a conflicting policy or if this is not, you know, if this is not uh, something that we can create at this time, like we just need to have that conversation in the issue about around, about, around what specification we want um, to define around updating a status for the traffic split object. And then the third thing is <clears throat> uh, just outlining um, what the behavior uh, should, wh what the behavior normally would be. Um, you would get 503s um, or any other, uh, we can outline any other behavior that we could look out for um, just in, that would be common to any implementation. Uh, just, so, just so if someone comes ac across this uh, issue, uh, they know what to look out for. Um, yeah. Okay, and then is there guidance on, so are we just not going to like resolve it from the impl like the implementation perspective? Um, I think we have to get more thoughts from the other maintainers on that. Maybe since we've had this conversation, we can ask them to watch this discussion or fall on the issue queue and give us more thoughts. I don't think it should be something that the spec should uh, define behavior for. I think that it should be an implementation specific um, thing uh, mm -hmm. or the implementation should handle conflicts. Um, but I do think we should call it out in the spec and clarify uh, what good patterns might be. Okay. One second, I, I don't think conflict is the right word for it. So okay. imagine, Imagine I have a HTTP route group and a traffic split definition inside, let's say my Helm chat, and I'm deploying my app to do Canary deployments or whatever like that. Then a cluster admin comes and say, hey, I don't want traffic to be routed with this header and it blocks it. This is how firewall works, right? You can enforce something. So in my yeah. mind, it's not a conflict, it's a policy enforcement. Even if you have some route definition that lists a bunch of headers, a cluster admin can say, hey, from all these headers, I'm allowing only these ones. Yeah. Because maybe you don't have, you cannot change the route group 
because maybe that route group definition comes from outside your organization, from a Helm chart made by someone else, for example. Yeah, that's I a really good point. If you think about network policies, right, you can, you can tell your app, hey, I want to call this other app, then the cluster admin says, no, here is a network policy and I'm blocking it. In, in the same way with SMI, we say, I'm not allowing this kind of header. Yeah, so it may just, like, it's not necessarily a conflict, so we might not have to work around it. We just have to call attention to it. Yes, for sure. Okay. All right. Um, cool. We have seven minutes left, and we are at... Uh, the end of the agenda as far as it's in Google Docs. That's really good. So um, any other business, anything else that's not on the agenda? Anyone wants to raise something or suggest something or volunteer for next time moderating or scribing? Hey, I have a question. Yes, please go ahead, Stefan. Um, is Microsoft working on a SMI implementation? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> I don't know if I'm like how much I can say, but yeah, Microsoft is working on implementing is there, SMI. Related question, is there any company anywhere in the world that is not working on an SMI implementation? Right. Uh, <laughs> Google isn't. Uh, That's okay, we have an adapter for them. <laughs> Speaking of which, I really need to review some PRs on that adapter. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Is the state of the adapter is that it is it functional right now? I don't know that it is. Yeah, it is. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, have right. you tested it? Yeah, I had. I mean, uh, I've been getting. Uh, yeah, I had feedback recently that I think it was with traffic metrics that it wasn't mm -hmm. really working. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the adapter doesn't deal with, um, the ISI adapter doesn't deal with the traffic me metrics. It just deals with split and policy. But um, yeah, metrics doesn't work because ISI has um, uh, made some updates in the latest version uh, around how they do metrics. And so we do need to update the traffic metrics implementation for ISI. I don't believe that works. And I was trying to carve some time out to, to do that. But to be honest, I had a really hard time, um, along with some of the other folks on my team, understanding um, SMI metrics. So I've been trying to figure out how to iterate on the document to make it a little more um, clear uh, how, how, it's, how to actually implement it. Um, and I think that some of the instructions on the metrics repo are also out of date considering their home two um, instructions and not home three. Um, and then the API server runs, but it doesn't have any storage uh, mechanism in the pod. Um, so, you know, you're just getting like a, like a JSON response uh, that is in the form of traffic metrics, the traffic metrics object. Uh, you can't really query um, Kubernetes to get the object back. There's no CRD or anything like that. And I'm just curious, um, you know, about the background of some of these decisions. So I'm going to try to carve some time out to work on the metrics stuff. And if anybody else is interested, let me know. Um, yeah. My, my understanding is that the, uh, the SMI metrics library is just a transformer between Prometheus and the um, um, external metric API in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So every every time Kubernetes asks, you ask the Kubernetes API, hey, give me a metric for a pod, then this library, what it does, it translates that API call into a Prometheus query mm -hmm. and it returns the result in, in the in the um, metrics, uh, Kubernetes metrics um, object, right? So 
I, I don't think it needs a storage because Prometheus should be the storage. Yeah. Uh, probably some caching, so it doesn't, you know, bombard Prometheus if you have like 100 HPAs doing the same uh, calls to the same thing. Um, it's more like in memory caching could be used there. I know the metrics server, the Prometheus adapter has something like that. that is, um, does Flagger use does Flagger use metrics at all, or does it or SMI metrics, or does it plan on using SMI metrics at all? Who cool. does Flagger uh, plan on using SMI metrics at all? I've been I've been thinking about this and it's uh, it's quite limited. I mean, most people use Flagger to write their own custom metrics queries. Like, okay, you have a latency and error rate that comes built in with any service mesh or ingress controller. But right. uh, most people are interested in hey, how many connections is the canary has the canary opened on the database? It's over a limit, then it's no good or any kind of business metric. So right now, Flagger calls out to, um, can call out to uh, Prometheus, Tech Driver, uh, and Datadog. And people are asking for New Relic and so on. So it's a, it's a different type of, different scale of metrics, let's say. Oh, that's, that makes sense. Um, I've been uh, like trying to, like, I think the, um, getting metrics on edges um, is really valuable. Also, uh, we've been looking into kind of like how to do that. Um, and I think some of the docs need to be updated because you can't really do edges with services. So mm -hmm. that's just something to look out for um, and something that needs to be updated. I think metrics needs a little, a little slash a lot of love right now. Oh, I see we're at time, so I'll stop rambling. All right. We are at the top, of, well, not really the hour, but half of the half hour. So thanks a lot, uh, everyone, for showing up. And uh, thanks a lot for subscribing, Bridget. And uh, see you in two weeks' time. Thanks a lot. And it'd be great Bye. if people wanted to volunteer to lead the call. Michael did an amazing job being tapped at the last minute. Otherwise, I will pick a victim next time. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.